this is Wes McDermott, and in this Unity Cookie Quick Tip, we're going to talk about a new feature in Unity 4.3, which is how to use blend shapes. So I have this little character head here, and I have a few blend shapes here applied to this. I'm just going to go ahead and hit play and just show you what this scene does. So I have a couple sliders here uh, that I created just using the Unity GUI system, and then we can actually adjust these sliders to kind of dial in a few effects here, uh, as you can see some blend shapes. Uh, working on this mesh. Uh, I'll also go ahead and just select the mesh itself and you can see here on the skin mesh renderer we have a new uh, section here for blend shapes and uh, I can just start to just adjust these sliders here and actually get some different type of facial expressions. So like I said here's a blink here and this is this is new to 4.3 and it's actually really cool in that we can do uh, some different types of kind of facial animation and things like that and what's really cool is, is you can actually drive this through script uh, as we'll talk about here later in the video. And so I just kind of wanted to demo for you what we're actually going to be talking about. So blend shapes. So let's take a look at this guy and just talk a little bit about the blend shapes themselves. So I'm going to jump over here to Maya. This is the program that I use to create the blend shapes. And uh, here you'll see that we've got a uh, several heads here. So if, you can, if I go ahead and click on these guys, you can see that we have several different head meshes. And a blend shape um, also probably called like a morph target and other type of applications is basically just taking some vert, vertex positions and then translating them or morphing them into uh, the position of another vertex position. So if we kind of look at this, you can see that uh, here is our kind of smile and uh, this is our default state. So since these are just basically a duplicate um, of this object, what we're doing is we're just morphing the vertex positions uh, from this happy or basically from this default position here into this happy position. So same vertex uh, vertices, uh, we're just basically morphing their positions. And uh, what we have is a couple different. Here's, here's the actual sad face you can see, here's kind of the snarl, and here's the eye closed. So what I did here inside of Maya was just created a couple of these blend shapes. Uh, I then actually added uh, each one of these objects to the blend shape deformer here in Maya. So uh, if we come up here to create deformers, you can see we have this blend shape um, setting here our tool and we can actually add uh, a blend shape node which is going to take each one of these uh, separate mesh items and give us a uh, blend shape. So if we go ahead and select our main mesh here and we come over here to our attribute editor load up here and here's blend shapes here you can see that we have a weighting and here is each one of these uh, mesh items has a slider associated with it. So it basically goes from like inside of my here, we're going to go from 0 to 1. Uh, and as we do that, we're just going to be basically blending the vertex positions. So we now, like I said before, we have the ability to work with that here inside of Unity. So once we go ahead and import in our object, let's take a look at where we actually import these blend shapes. So here in my assets, I'm going to actually select the model itself, and I'm going to come over here to the imports settings and underneath model we have a new uh, just basically like a option box here called uh, import blend shapes and so if we check this on if your object contains blend shapes it's going to import those in and we're going to be able to access them here inside of unity so once I went ahead and checked import blend shapes uh, and then uh, place my mesh item here into the scene and if we go ahead and select uh, Earl what happens is, is it adds a skin mesh render component. Now you can use blend shapes with uh, joints uh, and, and deformation as well. But what's interesting to point out is in the case of this item, uh, you can see that I have just a single mesh. There are not any joints. There are not uh, any other hierarchy items as part of this. So what happens is, is the blend shape, it just gets added as a skin mesh renderer. Okay, and then so underneath the skin mesh renderer, we now have this blend shapes. Uh, and this is basically going to act like uh, just an array index of elements. So you can see here that we have blend shape one dot eye blink. So uh, let's just jump back over here to Maya and see what that's actually referencing. So in this case, you can see that um, once I've selected the object, we have a new tab here called blend shape. And uh, this, this tab is actually what happens when you create the deformer. So it's actually a node. And I could have named this anything, but I just left it the default, which is blend shape one. So you can see that Unity is actually reading in the blend shape node. So we have blend shape one, and then there would be a dot, I blink, dot snarl, dot sad, dot happy. And so we'll jump back over to Unity, and you can see that that's actually what's uh, being read through here. So blend shape one, dot I blink. Now that we have uh, this 
these items here, we can actually start to um, access them uh, directly here in the editor. So if I wanted to uh, just start to dial this in, I can actually change uh, the the um, I can actually change the blend shape right here in the editor. Uh, one thing to note is that this actually goes from zero to one hundred. So in Maya, it's basically zero to one, but here in Unity, it's you know you've got a pretty good slide here I'll call it uh, where you have to go all the way from zero to one so you can see that as I'm starting to adjust this um, it's, it's slowly uh, adjusting the blend shape so let's go ahead and take this back to zero and so uh, what we're going to do is going to access this via code and I'm going to actually show you what the C sharp file looks like so we'll go over here to mono develop and we'll take a look at what we've done so the first thing I'm doing is I'm using the on GUI uh, in this case because I'm just using Unity's default uh, just GUI labels and sliders just to create a very basic UI. But if you're using a different UI system, you can easily do that as well. So it's not, you know, it's not dependent on Unity system whatsoever. So the first thing I did here uh, just to get the GUI stuff out of the way is I created a couple of these public float variables. So we've got iBlink, and I named them iBlink, excuse me, iBlink slider. Snarl slider, sad slider, and happy slider. And they're all set to 0, 0, 0. And so we, if we go back to URL, and this script is added to the URL mesh. Now, the reason that is done is because the skin mesh render component is part of this item. And I'm going to be referencing that component. So I want the script to be on the same mesh. So if we come over here to the uh, blend shape script that we're creating, you can see that here's all of our public. Uh, variables and notice here that I have the happy slider by default is set to 50 because that's what I want to have it set to here in the UI to start. So give him, you know, just a little bit of somewhat of an expression. Okay, so let's go back here to mono develop. And so that's what these public variables are doing here. And then we're going to go ahead and create ourselves a private variable and uh, of the skin mesh renderer type. And I just named it skin mesh render. And the reason we have that is because in the next function here, our start function, we're going to cache the skin mesh render component. So you can see that we're using the skin mesh renderer and we're using the get component of type skin mesh renderer. So what that's saying here is this script is going to be able to access all the way up here the skin mesh renderer component since they're on the same game object. And we want to make sure that we cache that because, you know, if we do that here in our start, it's a one-time lookup. And if we were to do something like that here in our update, it would be very expensive. So we want to make sure that we always cache any type of component lookups. So then moving on, we've got the on GUI. So this is just part of Un Unity system for being able to work with their, their default GUI slider. And all I'm doing is taking the iBlink, excuse me, the iBlink slider, which is our float value up here, and I'm just... Uh, Go ahead and assigning that the GUI dot horizontal slider uh, set a little um, rect here, which just basically positions it in the scene, uh, and then I'm just setting its value based off that. Now, the reason I want to really kind of explore this a bit on this horizontal slider because one of the values here is it says, okay, basically I want to know, you know, using this uh, this rect, you know, where am I in the scene? But then also, uh, what is the range that I'm going to be able to Know, that I'm going to be able to report here. So remember I told you that once we import in the blend shapes into Unity, that range is going to be from 0 to 100. So you want to make sure that, you know, in this case of using Unity's default system, we'd start from 0 and go all the way to 100. So each one of these sliders basically is set up. Uh, it's, it, each slider is corresponding to the public float variable for the blend shape that we want to be able to adjust. And its range is basically set from 0 to 100. Now, here's how we actually change the skin mesh render value. So right here in our update, we want to be able to access our skin mesh render. Now remember, we cached that all the way up here into our start. So we have that component lookup cached. So we basically use the set blend, uh, set blend shape weight function here. And so it takes two values, an index and a value. Okay, or excuse me, two parameters, or so I should say. This function here takes two parameters, an index and a value. Now, the index is talking about, uh, you know, what th that's how you target which blend shape. So, for instance, if we look at, you know, the first one here, we set it to zero, and then we said, I blink slider. So, we're saying, take the blend shape that's at index zero and give it the value of I blink slider. So, here's our I blink slider. Remember, here it's going from zero to 100. We come back into um, Unity here. You can see that uh, this blend shape, so if I kind of collapse that, 
uh, you can see that uh, this is basically just looking at like a list. So it's just basically a list of all the blend shapes. And if you look at this list in an order, it's going to be uh, using an array index value. So the first item in the list is going to be 0, the second is going to be 1, the third is 2, and so on. So in our case, if we look at the first, or 0, you can see that that's actually eye blink. 1 is going to be snarl, and 2 is sad, and 3 is happy. So if we go back to mono develop, you can see that's exactly how we have that set up. 0 is going to our eye blink. Let's just move this over just a bit so you can see this. So 0 is our eye blink, 1 is snarl, 2 is sad, and 3 is happy. So that's how we have that working. And then so all we're doing is just using the set blend shape function as part of the skin mesh render, and we're setting the index, or excuse me, we're setting the blend shape via the index, that's how we're targeting it, and we're just setting that to the slider value. So it's actually pretty simple once we get that set up. Now again, I'll go ahead and just play, and you can see that uh, the on GUI function is being called, gives us our GUI, and then I can start to just adjust these sliders. And you can see that by doing that, over here in our skin mesh render, you can see that that blend slider, so if I flip this slider all the way to 100, you can see that it's actually setting the eye blink for 100, you know, set it about in the middle, and we're around 50 or whatever. So you can see that as we start to move the slider, that's how we're actually adjusting this. And like I said, this is actually a really cool setting here in 4.3. It's a really cool new feature in that it uh, gives you the ability to work with uh, some expressions on your characters without having to set up any type of, uh, you know, complicated um, uh, iRig type system. And beyond just facial expression, you can think of this as other ways. So, like, maybe, you know, if you had something that um, maybe as it hit the ground, like a ball bouncing, and you wanted to actually show some squash and stretch and things like that, you could actually link that to a blend shape or maybe an item getting damage and, and showing some kind of dent, you know, push-in type effects of the mesh, you could actually hook that up to a blend shape. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use that. So that's going to clear out this uh, quick tip. I hope you enjoyed this, and stay tuned for more quick tips here on unitycookie.com.